Hello everyone, my name is uh, Gajendra Deshpande and today I will be presenting a talk on Python and FOSS in uh, education for Generation Z. So FOSS is nothing but uh, free and open source software. So these are the contents which we are going to discuss today. Uh, the Generation Z, so that means who are the students who belongs to Generation Z, then BYOD, so what do you mean by BYOD? and how it is important in education, what are its advantages and disadvantages. Then we are going to discuss few tools such as QPython, Blockly, Visupy, then Textbook Companion Project, and Flogorhythm, then how we can build a new programming language support. It's the example for Julia language and how we can create it using Python template. Then finally, the future goals. So Generation Z, so these are the people who are born between 1995 and 2010. So these are the true digital natives, that is from their earliest youth, they have been exposed to the internet, social networks and mobile systems. That means they are all gadget oriented people. So you see, uh, they use a lot of gadgets like mobile phones or even uh, uh, earphones, etc. So these are very tech savvy people and they believe in uh, hands-on learning. So, and if you consider the teachers now, they are not belong to, uh, they don't belong to generation Z, they belong to the previous generations, that is generation Y and uh, generation X. Then BYOD stands for bring your own device. So with BYOD, you are creating one-to-one -one classroom. Students bring and use their own devices, their own choice of technological devices in the classroom. So BYOD has got many advantages and disadvantages. Uh, the benefits of uh, BYOD are that your students know the device because after all it is their device so they know clearly how to use that device. So you need not have to worry about the device's configurations. So it shows that technology has many possibilities and cutting edge devices are possible because generally whenever students buy any gadgets they buy the recent one and it is cost effective from the side of uh, an institution. So institute does not have to invest much in procuring the advanced devices. Then learning outside the school hours is possible. Then respect for the device. Since it is their device, they use the device very carefully. So otherwise if, they, if it is the institute's device or if it is others device, then they may not use it with care. Then it also helps in uh, building the organized student community. Then the disadvantages of uh, BYOD, that is bring your own devices are that there are students without devices because of their uh, financial conditions, they may not be able to buy the devices, even maybe a simple phone. Then the different devices, uh, we don't have a control here. Each student has got his own uh, or her own device preferences, their own uh, configurations. Uh, so it may create problems sometimes whenever they want to connect to a classroom or to a teacher's system in a classroom because some may have uh, Android uh, based mobile phones, some may have uh, iOS based mobile phones and so on, then it also creates a distraction because students may also use it for other purposes. Maybe they may use the device for chatting apart from learning inside the classroom. Then it results into a not responsible student. Now many countries have got BYOD policy. Uh, that means uh, if you see the example here, Austria, USA, and many countries in Europe, like Estonia, Finland, Norway, Portugal, Switzerland, United Kingdom, 
Australia. So they have the BYOD policies. They encourage uh, BYOD in the classroom. Even in India, AICT is encouraging the use of uh, bring your own devices uh, concept in the classroom. Now, as we know that uh, because of BYOD, the students will be able to use uh, or able to bring the their own device and use it. So most of the times when we say bring your own device, actually it is the laptop, but many people or many students we have, what we have observed is they don't get their laptops because of various reasons. Some may not uh, have purchased it or some they don't want to bring it. So for them, there is a solution that uh, most of the people, they have the smartphones. So you can use the smartphone for teaching learning process. So what we can do now is if we are teaching a class using Python, right? Or if you are teaching a Python course in the classroom, then there is a very nice mobile application called as QPython. So it basically runs only on Android now. Okay. So QPython is a script engine which runs Python programs on Android devices. It also can help developers develop Android applications. So you can also develop here web applications. It has also got the support of uh, Jupyter Notebooks. Then the advantages are that you can easily develop the applications. So QPython includes a complete development kit, which help you to develop programs with the mobile. Then it is very powerful because you can extend it as you want. Then it has got a great support. So commercial support can support your uh, development with uh, QPython API or uh, embed qpython sdk that is software development kit so it, it can save you a lot of time yeah so to download uh, qpython you have to visit uh, www.qpython.com it comes with uh, two versions one is qpython and second one is qpython 3 so whatever screen you are seeing here screenshot so it's the welcome screen of uh, QPython software. So you can see here two more screenshots like QPython also supports terminal and it also supports the Jupyter Notebooks. It can execute Python programs on terminal and notebook on Android programs. So let us see the small demo here. So what I have done here is I have installed QPython on my mobile phone and I have connected my mobile phone's screen on laptop using TeamViewer. So there is a, a option now QPython OL. So you can click on that. So you can see here we have got the same screen which we had uh, uh, seen. Now the important ones are here three options terminal editor and explorer if i click on terminal so you can see here it is showing me the terminal window here i can directly start typing the uh, python code let's say i'll say 10 plus uh, 20 and when i press enter you can see here it is showing me the result 30. let me also try to print some message here print hello qpython okay so you can see here it has printed the message now let me come out of this by typing exit yeah so again i am back on my screen now there is an option also option called as editor so you can type your entire program entire python program here and you can save it and also run it 
so i'll write hello pycon korea okay so this is what i have typed now you can see here there is a run button right so you, when you click on run button it says a warning do you want to save the changes first so you can say yes to save the file now so you have to specify the message file name here so let's say hello one dot pi and save it so you can see the message at the top that it's saved and you can also note the change there from untitled to hello one dot pi now again let's click on run yeah so there is there is some error here yeah that's that's fine so let's go back and modify modify the program yeah so after that you can save it now let's run it yeah so you can see here that it is showing the message that program has run successfully so then there is also a third option called as explorer so come to explorer here then you can see here there is an option called as notebooks so there are some jupyter notebooks here so let's click on welcome.ipyy can be file note here that if you want to open a jupyter notebook and work with it the option has to be enabled then only you will be able to start the jupyter notebook let's see what happens here yeah so it says that please enable qpython qpy notebook in the setting let's say okay but it was already enabled here so not a problem let's see whether i will be able to open it yeah so i'm able to open it here so you can see here that there are uh, already some code written so to run any code block just click on that and run this option next option then again run next option right so you can see it whenever you are clicking on run so it is now running the program right okay so it has printed the message hello 10 so just a small message has uh, appeared on the screen so i uh, this q python is very very uh, useful tool to be used in the classroom so now again let's move back to our uh, presentation here yeah so this was about q python the next tool is google blockly so blockly is a library created by google it's basically created using javascript it supports many languages so it's a library for building visual programming editors blockly is a library that adds visual code editor to web and mobile applications the blockly editor uses interlocking graphical blocks to represent uh, code concepts like variables logical expressions loops and more so it allows users to apply programming principles without having to worry about syntax or the intimidation of blinking cursor on the command line so basically if you have played a jigsaw puzzle game so it looks exactly like that 
So you have here different code blocks. You need to drag and drop appropriate code block and make the appropriate setting there. So together it creates a code block and you can run it. So you need not have to worry about the syntax of the programming language. So from the user's perspective, Blockly is an intuitive visual way to build code. From a developer's perspective, Blockly is ready-made user interface for creating a visual language that emits syntactically correct user-generated code. Then next, Blockly can export blocks to many programming languages, including JavaScript, Python, PHP, Lua, and Dart. It also supports Arduino. Now, if you want to build a different language support, the entire Blockly source code is available. It's open source. You can uh, refer their documentation and you can uh, generate the support for your own language. Now, Blockly is one of the growing number of visual programming environments. Deciding which one to use in your application is an important step. So here are a few Blockly's biggest strengths to help you make the decision. So first one is the exportable code. Users can extract their block-based programs to common programming languages and smoothly transition to text-based programming. The next one is the open source. Everything about Blockly is open. You can fork it, hack it, and use it in your own sites and Android applications. Then extensible, tweak Blockly to fit your needs by adding custom blocks for your API or removing unneeded blocks and functionality. Then it is highly capable. Blockly is not a toy. You can implement complex programming tasks like calculating standard deviation in a single block. It is truly international. That is Blockly has translated to 40 plus languages, including right to left versions for Arabic and Hebrew. Okay, so whatever you are seeing on the screen now, it's the uh, basic user interface of uh, Blockly. And you can see here that this is a very simple code which prints hello world message for up to three times and up to four times basically here. Uh, you can see here on the left side, you have the Blockly code. And on the right hand side, it is the generated code in Python language. Let's see how it works. Let's see the demo again. So, yeah. So you can visit this site, developers.google.com slash Blockly. So you can see here, this is the basic code, which is written and loaded. So if you want, you can modify it. So you can see here that these are the languages supported. JavaScript, Python, PHP, Lua, and Dart. Let us select Python here. Now see here, when we select Python, the code has been now converted to Python language. Now let's click on Run button. Now it says, hello world. First time, second time, third time, fourth time. Okay, so four times. Hello world has been printed. So these are the different blocks. So you can see here, there are different blocks. You just need to drag and drop it here, right? When you drag and drop it here, it will generate the corresponding code automatically. So you can see here, so it has generated the code, it is generating the code. So whenever you want, you can just go on putting the a block so just for demonstration purpose i'll write some value here but i will not execute this code block so this is just for demonstration okay so likewise you have got uh, several other options for functions and etc right even for mathematical operations uh, there are uh, functionalities so square root of nine, when I say, when I just drag and drop it here, so it generates the code for it. So it's very simple to use and it's a great tool. And you can see here, there are a lot of things which are built using uh, Blockly. 
So you can do a lot of uh, great things. Okay, so let's move back to presentation again. Yeah, so next tool is the Visupy. This is the code visualization tool. Actually, this was one of the project in uh, CERN's WebFest 2020. So some team has created it. I don't have the exact details, but if you go to the following link, that is webfest.cern slash projects, you will get the link and there is also a video on it. So you can watch the video to understand how it works. So basically what you can see here is it is just the opposite of whatever you have seen earlier. So what your Blockly does is it generates the source code from the blocks. Okay, you are dragging and dropping the blocks and once it is done, you are generating the source code. But here you have the opposite way. You have the source code here and you want to understand the working of the source code and flow of the source code. So in this case, from source code, you are generating the visualization. Okay. Then next, this is also a great project related to Python. So it is known as Python Textbook Companion Project by FOSI, that is IIT Bombay, India. So the Textbook Companion uh, activity aims to create a repository of reference material for Python by coding solved examples of standard engineering textbooks using Python. So this activity intends to make individuals learn Python through a practical approach, provide a huge database of companions as a learning resource, to make it easy for resources, uh, to make it easy for users of such textbooks to start using Python to improve the documentation available for Python. So here, uh, it, it, was, it was an interesting project. So what they do is, there are some textbooks. So you need to select a textbook. And for that, from that textbook, you need to pick the examples and you have to write the code in Python language. So in this way, they created a huge database of Python programs, which can be used in teaching that particular subject, but with Python examples. So it was again a very interesting concept. Right now, they are not accepting any proposals, but in the past, many have participated here. And uh, the advantage is that the selected fellows will be paid by FOSI project and they have been paid uh, in the past. So to get more details, you can visit this website, https tbc pythonfosiin Yeah, so this is the user interface. So if you visit uh, this website, you will get all the details like who can contribute, how to contribute, what are the guidelines for coding, Everything is mentioned here on this site. The next uh, interesting tool is the Flogorhythm. So Flogorhythm is a free beginner's programming tool that is based on simple graphical flowcharts. So it looks almost similar to Google Blockly, but it has a different concept because it deals with the flowcharts. So typically when a student uh, first learns a program, they often use one of the text-based programming languages. Depending on the language, this can either be easy or frustratingly difficult. Many languages require you to write lines of confusing code just to display the text hello world. By using flowcharts, you can concentrate on programming concepts rather than all the nuances of uh, typical programming language. So you can also run your program directly in the Flogorhythm. So once you understand the programming logic, it is easy for you to learn one of the major languages. So Flogorhythm can interactively convert your flowchart to over 18 programming languages. So it includes C Sharp, C++, Java, JavaScript, Lua, Perl, also Python, then Ruby, Swift, Visual Basic .NET, and so on. So the greatest advantage of logarithm, what I see here is, so we see that many students native language is not English. 
they come from rural backgrounds they don't have access to the um, english medium education in their early education so it becomes difficult for them to catch up with english medium instructions so in that case we can use tools like flogorhythm or block blockly where they can just concentrate on building the logic instead of the syntax and semantics of the programming language so that's a great uh, way of teaching programming for beginners whose native language is not english so flogorhythm has some features that is it there is easy to understand output graphical variable watch window then it can interactively generate a real code that is 18 plus language including python is supported it also supports safe recursion it supports loops arrays and flexible expressions then it also supports multilingual support including korean so a user interface you can have in your own language you can draw flow chart in your own language that's the advantage here if you don't find the language for you if you don't find the support for your language then you can write to the creator of a flogorhythm uh, to devin cook so he will provide you the file and you can translate and send him so he will integrate it into flogorhythm software so we know that Uh, flowchart means there are some symbols so these are the symbols which are supported here so you have support for comments and breakpoints then you also have input output symbols then you have variables symbol then control flow statements function calls looping statements so all basic flowchart symbols are supported yeah so you can see here this is a simple program which is created so what it does is it just computes the sum of uh, n numbers so on the left side you can see that see here that there is a flow chart and on the right hand side it generates the source code in python then on the right bottom corner you can see the output of the program so let's see the demo again for flogorhythm so when you start flogorhythm you will get this window here let me if you want to change the language so you can see here so it it supports so many languages including korean then also there is so let's change the view layout windows so i would like to have flow chart code as well as output in the same window so that's why i have chosen this so let me open some program here okay okay that's fine so let's print a hello message program so let's select hello output symbol then just double click on it then in a quote just write message here hello flow rhythm and say okay so you can see here it has generated the code in python so similarly if you click here you can see here that it supports so many languages right now it has generated the source code now let's run it and you can see here at the bottom it has displayed the output okay so this is about a flogorhythm tool so you can visit flogorhythm website here that is flogorhythm.org to get to know about more details now let's uh, go to the next concept how we can support uh, or how you can build support for a new language for uh, a new language for flogorhythm using templates so if you visit this url that is the documentation url 
so some templates are uh, mentioned here lua java pascal and python templates are mentioned so let's download the python template i have already downloaded the python template so it's in txt file so you can just go on mentioning go on men, uh, making the changes here so i wanted to create the support for julia language so instead of python i'll write julia i'll write extension as .jl i will list here julia's keywords then similarly i will also make appropriate changes here appropriate uh, changes at appropriate places let's say for example these expression syntaxes will be changed then yeah so julia doesn't support some operators here so i need to make appropriate changes here then some intrinsic functions so whatever functions my language supports that i have to mention here so if something is not supported just remove it okay so similarly you can see here these are the uh, syntax of uh, python programming language so i don't want it here so just replace the syntax of your own language so in my case i will replace it with julia so i have already done it it's available on my uh, github repository okay so once it is done you need to save it with an extension dot fpgt so that is flogorithm template file and what you should be doing here when you generate the source code is that yeah so instead of python here now you need to select appropriate template file so open template file and this is the julia template file and when i say open so you can see here that it okay fine i think there is some problem fine but it selects the code uh, appropriate code will be generated so let's go back to our presentation again yeah so the advantages are that it's easy to use drag and drop and corresponding code generation is possible it is very beginner friendly and great tool to learn uh, problem solving so code generation is limited for example two or more dimension arrays are not supported so language specific features are not supported many times presently no support for indic languages so we need to develop support for indic languages especially with respect to the user interface so that it can reach to the villages and it can reach to the uh, students of village at their early age so that they can be introduced to computing at their early age yeah so this we have seen then the future goals is that add indic language support for flogorithm and customize blockly for more languages then more code visualization tools can be developed then more gamified tools are required to enhance learning and to create better experience of uh, learning for students thank you everyone for your patience listening patient listening and providing me an opportunity to speak at uh, pycon korea thank you thank you everyone